Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our eighth and very last summer STEAM program of our 2020 summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. I'm Miss Mary, Storytime Programmer at the Faulkner County Library, and I just want to say a super big thank you to everyone who has participated in our summer STEAM programs this summer. I know things have been really different, so I appreciate all of you going on this journey with us. Unfortunately, I don't have any answers as to what our programming will look like um, when the school year starts. We still don't know when the library will open and we don't know when we will resume face-to-face -face programming. But after this week, we are gonna take some time off to regroup and look at where we go from here with our programming. So keep an eye out on um, the library's Facebook page, the Children's Department Facebook page, and we'll try to get word out to all of you as soon as we know something. In the meantime, let's get started with the fun stuff we have today. We've got a lot going on. Today we are gonna make some sheets, a very simple, fun, fine motor activity. We are gonna learn how to draw fish using only triangle shapes. Right, how cool is that gonna be? Then we are gonna make miniature ocean gardens. Yes, miniature ocean gardens, I did say that. And then we're gonna finish up with some science demonstrations at the end, exploring the surface tension of water. What is surface tension? Well, that's what we're gonna learn about. Let's get started. All right, who doesn't love sheep? I'm sure there's somebody who doesn't love sheep out there, but white fluffy sheep. And then when they get shaved, when they get their haircuts, they are so amazing to see what they look like underneath all of that fuzzy wuzzy wool. So in your packets, you're gonna have two foldable sheet templates. This is one and this is the other one. You can make one, you can make both. It's completely up to you. I'm gonna cut those templates out using some scissors. I've got white pom-poms and a glue stick, and I'm gonna get to work on making a fuzzy wuzzy woolly bully lamb, or sheep. I guess a lamb is a baby sheep. Here we go. Now I've cut my two sheep out. I wanted to point out two things. You notice I did not cut them completely in half. I stopped cutting here and I stopped cutting there and I stopped cutting here. So they should look like this. Of the two, this one is less challenging than this one. This one's a little more challenging to cut out, but it's got lots of curves. Great job. I really encourage you kiddos to get after it with these scissors. Make those strong hands. Cut those good curvy shapes. I know you can do it. So the reason we didn't cut that part down the middle is that we are going to fold them so that our sheep stand up. I know I'm very excited. I hope this works the way I think it will in my head. But I think the next step is to put some glue on my sheep and then I'm going to start attaching those pom-poms. Here I go. Okay, I'm not sure that I did this the best way. I may have to do the other one just so I can try to perfect and change my outcome a little bit. I used the glue stick well and see they're starting to fall off on one side that was the most recent side so maybe it just hadn't had time to dry they actually stuck better on that side but nope i think we're gonna have to use liquid glue for this all right lesson learned hope i can um help you avoid having to learn that one on your own too so i'm gonna go get some liquid glue and i'm gonna make the other sheet
Okay, so this is where I'm at with our sheep project. So I colored this sheep. I colored one side of it pink and one side of it blue because remember how I said when you shave the wool, fur, hair, um, but when you shave the wool off of the sheep, you can see their skin underneath and we're just not used to seeing that. And some of the sheep photos and videos I've seen, some of the sheep have um, light pink skin and some of them have darker skin in various shades. So I colored one side blue and one side pink. And um, I wanted to see if I could cover it with enough pom-poms that you really couldn't see the pink or the blue underneath. And I did okay. You can still see it a little bit if you look. So what is going to happen? Have Do you think that the pom-poms will stay on now that I've used the liquid glue? We're gonna have to wait and let it dry to see. So I'm gonna wait for it to dry. I'm gonna film it, um, film us folding it in half and seeing if they stay on. That may be a steam challenge I didn't expect today. How to attach the pom-poms to these cardstock sheep in a way that they will stay on when we fold them and stand them up. Okay, so many of you liked drawing the butterfly using nothing but circle shapes. Today, we're gonna draw a fish using nothing but triangle shapes. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We are going to draw a fish using nothing but triangle shapes. And look, the book says here, there's a photo of a fish and it says fish live in water. They can have many colors. Let's draw a fish. Draw a green triangle for the top of your fish. Okay, I've got a green marker, here we go. All right, now draw a purple triangle for the body of your fish. All right, so here comes a purple triangle. And this one kind of comes up a little bit. Okay, so there's the bottom of our fish body. Now it says draw a red triangle for a fin on top of your fish. Um, my red marker dried up is kaput. So I'm gonna use this pink one instead. So we're gonna draw a little pink triangle, kind of like that. Alrighty. And then next, we are gonna draw three small blue triangles on the body of our fish. I bet these are for the gills. What do you think? So let me count. One, two, three. And look how they're kind of stacked up on top of each other. Ooh, I wonder what comes next. Draw a pink triangle for the top of the tail, okay. So I'm gonna draw it right here, kind of along with that green right there. And it's gonna be a little bit long, kind of like that. All right, next we are going to draw an orange triangle for the tail of your fish. I can do that. I'm gonna follow this purple line here for that. And kind of another long, tall triangle. Does it look like a fish to you? It kind of looks like a fish to me. Now it says draw a yellow triangle for a fin on the body of your fish. Well, I don't have yellow. I'm gonna use my orange again, and I'm gonna come down here to the bottom, maybe like where the belly of the fish is, and I'm gonna draw a little bottom fin. Hmm, I think we're getting close to done. Okay, now it says, draw a small black triangle for the eye of your fish. So I'm gonna do that like right here. There we go. All right, now it says you can color in your fish. Nice work. But I'm gonna show you what theirs look like when they colored it in. Well, here, we're gonna start with this. Did I do a pretty decent job of replicating it? Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. And this is how it looked when they colored it in. Oh my goodness, how exciting. I really like that. So here's some words to know. This is the eye of the fish, the fin of the fish, and the tail of the fish. 
we drew our fin on the top and bottom of the bodies. And the tail was here at the opposite end of the mouth and eye. Very cool. All right, what are we gonna do next? All right, so we've made our sheep and I'm waiting for my sheep to dry. We have drawn a fish with triangles. Now it's time to make our mini mermaid garden. How is that gonna work? Well, I don't know, I'm about to make one for the first time. We've got these little plastic jars and with screw top lids. So don't worry, this is not like um, ocean in a jar. We're not gonna be putting any liquid in here. So it has a screw top off and on. And I've got a variety of things that I'm gonna put in your packet. We've got some seashells, some glitter, some colored sand, some I think very mermaid-esque yarn. Um, we've got little plastic ocean figures. Oh, we've got some tails. We've got some uh, decorative glass, some beads, and some shiny iridescent raffia. I don't even know if I'm gonna put all this in my ocean jar. It's pretty small. Um, so a couple of ways you could do this. You could try to make a scene, a very simple scene, which means I'm probably going to attach anything that I put in here, like a shell or a plastic ocean figurine and then I'll put sand or whatever in on top of it. So as you move it around, the sand will move, but hopefully your little figurine won't. And if you've got a younger kid and you just wanna put some loose uh, figures in here, some um, shells, some little fish or sharks or something, and fill it with um, sand or something else, it can be one of those jars or things where you turn around and look at it and kind of play an I spy game. Like, what can you find? Oh, what is that? That's a clam fish. All right, wish me luck. I hope this turns out well. Okay, so I didn't want to use all the materials, so I picked what I wanted. I picked a mermaid tail, and I picked some of these um, blue decorative glass pieces. I picked out a squid and a seashell, and I took one of these plain um, wooden cubes and I colored it with a black marker and then you probably can't tell but I drew on it with a gold marker I thought it might look a little bit like a treasure chest and then I found this shiny chenille stones and I thought they looked a little bit like ocean coral so this is what I'm going to put into my jar I think I'm going to attach some of it to the bottom of the lid and I'm going to attach some of it down here. Um, I'm going to use glue dots. Yep. I think it turned out pretty cool. I've got a mermaid tail in there and then my squid and my sea glass and my little treasure chest and my coral and my seashell and I've got a few on the top. Oh, and so what I did is I just mixed some green sand with a little bit of um, glitter. And there we go, there's my ocean garden, my little miniature ocean garden. So this is a great project. Not only does it work your fine motor skills, it definitely works your planning skills. Figuring out where you want to put things in the process for putting them all in there, what goes first, second, third, um, et cetera. But also, I bet you could make up more than one story to go along with what's in your little mini garden, your mini ocean garden. Oh, just love these little mini gardens. I hope you have fun with it too. All right, I think it's time to see if my sheep, it feels like it's dried, not completely, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm gonna try to fold it in half and we will see. Oh, so far, so good. Whoosh, whoosh. 
hold it full. Oh, nope, still a little wet. Mm, glue on my finger. But the pom-poms are staying on, so I could set it up. Mm -hmm. I could set it up on a table. Yep. <gasps> yep, there's our little three-dimensional sheep. Bah! Bah! I guess that means it's time for our surface tension science demonstration. All right, it is science demonstration time. We are going to do some science demonstrations that will hopefully help us learn about surface tension in water. So all things are made up of tiny particles called molecules, and these molecules tend to stick together, um, stopping um, things from breaking up. Now you can see how molecules molecules stick or pull together by looking closely at the surface of a glass of water as um, we do this science demonstration. So the first thing we're going to try to do is make some bulging water. So for this you'll need a drinking glass, a, some water, and some small coins. Now this glass is not full. We need to fill this glass to the tippy top edge to the brim with water. So wish me luck. Here I go. Trying to do this without making a mess. Not quite to the brim, not quite to the brim, not quite to the brim, not quite to the brim. Okay, there we go. I'm afraid if I put any more water in there, it will spill out. Like, I feel like I, if I look down, like if I get down here, hello, and I look at the edge of the water, I think it, it might be just, I can see it moving. It might be just slightly above the uppermost brim of the cup. So what we're gonna do is gently slide some coins in and see what happens to the surface of the water as we add the coins. I'm gonna start with my smallest coin. Do you know what that's called? It's called a dime. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I'm kind of nervous. I think a little bit of it splashed out. Could you tell? Oh man, that water that water's definitely bulging over the top. What do you think's gonna happen when I slide this penny in? Oh, did you see any spill? I didn't see any spill that time, but oh my goodness, it's even, it's up past the edge. What's gonna happen when I drop in this coin? Let's see. Oh, I think it dropped, spilled out. All right, a quarter. This is my biggest coin. Let's see what happens. Whoa, that water is bulging. I'm gonna drop in another one here. Oh, it overflowed, it bulged and overflowed. You can see it if you get down here. Ooh, and look at the top of the cup. If the water is higher than the top of the cup, what is happening? Okay, I'm gonna slide in that one. That water is totes bulging. Oop, I forgot to add a nickel. Here we go. The water looks like it's floating up past the top of the cup. So what is happening? Well, the book says that if you add the coins gradually, the water should bulge above the glass without tumbling down the side. The water molecules pull or stick together with enough force to stop the water from spilling. Although we did see it spill out a little bit a couple of times. Now, if you keep adding coins though, like we did, the water above the class will become so great that the molecules will break apart and the water will spill, which we saw when we saw a little bit drip down the side there. All right, well, thanks for joining me for making bulging water. Full disclosure on my science demonstrations today. I filmed the bulging water demonstration, which worked for me. I also tried this needle on water science demonstration. Um, that took a lot longer than I expected to do. So just a heads up, when I tried to speed it up, it didn't work the way I thought that it would. So um, I still think the needle on water would be very simple and easy to try at home where you could leave it and come back to it. 
Um, the changing surface tension science demo, it's very similar to the one I did before with milk and dishwashing liquid. It's just a simpler version of it. Um, I think I could never get my water droplets small enough to work, but this one is really fun and really simple. So let me know how these science demonstrations were or experiments work out for you at home. Um, you learn a little bit about molecules and atoms while you're at it. And I can't believe this is our last summer STEAM. Um, don't forget to click on the link with this post to request the materials to recreate um, these summer STEAM demonstrations at home. Um, since it's the last week, you may find a few little extra goodies in there. It's just our way of saying thank you for being a part of this uh, weird 2020 um, virtual summer reading program. I love you all so much Mwah! and I cannot wait till the next time we're together. Bye-bye.